two up, two down. Jeff, I think I'm going to start today with uh, a sadness. I'm going to start with something that You're brings bum me us down. out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to open up with a downer. Okay, so here, here's what brings me down. I, I realize that as we do two up, two down, I, I, I already can see there's a trend. This is going to be media that I intake. We're going to see a lot of that. And we're also going to see foods. That's just... <laughs> That's the way that it is. Okay. So I'm going to start with, um, now you actually, I don't know who made this movie. So I think this might be a Netflix movie. Um, and, and I don't have Netflix, but I get screeners in the mail. So I received a movie, um, starring, uh, a guy, I, a guy I kind of like Andrew Garfield. Oh. And I think I feel that he was introduced to the world through um well he was introduced to me i'm pretty sure by the social network um i think that was maybe the first time i saw him and uh that's a good that's a good way to have him introduced in your world by the way mm -hmm. um so he's the star of a movie called do you know what I'm t you know where i'm going with this tick, tick, boom. You, you've got it I, have you even seen a trailer for this thing yeah i saw a trailer for it Oh, I don't know how you become aware of everything. Um, okay, now, uh, okay, I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lump two things together. I, you're gonna find that a lot for me, lumping things together. I'm gonna lump Tick Tick Boom and a movie. I think this might also have been a Netflix movie called The Harder They Fall, which is a western, and it's clearly it's so clearly a um, Tarantino ripoff this movie mm. every i mean the music um trying to be like 60s spaghetti western music the editing it is 100 percent. this guy is going i'm making a tarantino movie which shouldn't be and offensive because that's all tarantino does he's rip ripping off. off somebody else so it's Fair just enough. a copy of a copy of a copy but yes but as we know tarantino took a very specific group of things and said this is going to be my brand as i'm ripping off these things Okay, so I have to I have to read for you a sentence that's at the top of the back of the DVD for the harder they fall. So this is their lead sentence to describe this movie. Here, here it goes. Th this tells you everything you need to know about the movie. A terrific cast. That's the that that's the first sentence on the back of the DVD player. A terrific cast through sheer power of representation. It's shaking up the very restrictive codes of the Western genre. Oh. So what, what, what they're saying is there, there weren't 12 black cowboys all together, but we're <laughs> shoehorning them into this movie. And just by the fact that we've cast it that way, this is a great, great movie. And I think that's all you need to know uh, going forward is that, that that's all they had to do. And it was instantly a great movie, according to that reviewer. Similarly, Tick, Tick, Boom. I didn't know anything about it. I like to not know a, a darn thing before I start a screener. And Tick, Tick, Boom. I just got to throw this by you, Jeff. And I'm, and I'm sad that you've heard of the movie. Imagine, imagine, just go, just go with me in your, in your mind here. Imagine um, an artist, okay? And, and I, it, it goes without saying that artists and the creators of, of artistic enterprises are completely underrepresented in movies. And we don't know anything about these people. But imagine this fascinating world of a guy. He's in New York City. Uh -huh. a, place, Wait, a, pla a place that's pretty unexplored in, in pop also media. Also unrepresented. In, oh, unrepresented. Yes. He's in New York City. He's got a dream now. Again, we don't see a lot of dreamers up on mm -hmm. the on the on the silver screen. He's a dreamer. He's gonna write. He's gonna write music for Broadway shows, and nobody wants him, and nobody says he has the talent. But he is going to keep after it, Jeff. He's gonna keep after it, and he loses his love, the love of his life. Oh. That's okay. I mean, I think that was worth it for the dream to lose sure. having a family or being married. She moves away to get a steady job. He cannot sell his dream down the river. 
And um, people don't understand him. They don't understand what he's trying to do with his life. And uh, boy, it is a, it's a riveting good time. And those two movies fall underneath sadness for me. There's something that I was sad about. I'm sad that I invested uh, probably a grand total of 45 minutes between those two films. I'm sad that those, that the millions of dollars it took to make those movies could actually happen. I'm sad at the state of movies. I'm sad. With the harder they fall, I'm going to assume Mario Van Peebles was sitting there shaking his head <laughs> and going, did nobody see the all black cowboy movie I made in like 1998? <laughs> and they said, nope. I know we didn't. And now in a few years, they'll do this again. And like harder they fall guy goes, nobody see my movie. And no, nobody <laughs> nope. saw it. Nope. I saw that trailer for Tick, Tick, Boom, and I thought, uh, here we go. And I think it's about Rent, right? It's about him writing Rent. Is that true? No, it's actually not. It's about him writing the show before Rent, and he oh. finally got he, he finally was seen by all the right people. And Stephen Foster plays plays uh, plays uh, plays. Uh, he appears prominently as a looming figure. If I could just get his. His, Stephen uh, Foster. Approval. Oh, Stephen Sondheim. Sondheim. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I saw that it was directed by. Let me Lin finish. Oh, I'm, I'm so, sorry. And so what happened was he kind of got the right people to see his first thing. They all go, this is really good. You're really talented. Can't wait to see your next thing. And he was mm -hmm. shuddered. He was shuddered. That's an end of act two kind of a thing right there. Oh, sure. Yeah. That'll take you down, down, down the well. Um, so uh, then they didn't even cover uh, like what it took for him to put together rent. That, that was kind of in closing credits uh, kind of, and he also, and he went on to make rent. I saw When I saw the trailer, I, I was about 20 seconds in the trailer. I thought this doesn't look any good, but there's something <laughs> in me that watches. I, I'll go ahead and finish the trailer. It's Lynn manuel So you will persevere and you'll watch a trailer. You'll watch that extra 45 seconds. Well, I'm, I'm committed in for a wow. penny in for a pound. Good for you. And I saw it was made by Lynn Manuel. And, yes, and, and I don't like. He him. has his fingers on all sorts of things right now, but and, they're not and going they're... well. That his big movie from last year did not do well. I don't think this movie has done well. And now I think he does little animated things that are fine, but that lead that leads to something that maybe I'll bring up at some point. Yeah, maybe. Is, boy, I can't abide Hamilton. Well, you and I share this hot take. I don't think it's any good, and I don't think he's any good. The, there, I said it. I'll, I'll just before we move on. I just want to go on record and say I think he did some pretty amazing things with that show. In how I'm told, people who really go in deep on this, that oh, they love it. He's quoting other, and I, I okay, I'll go with that. But I don't like it. I don't uh -huh. like it one bit. I don't want to hear any <laughs> of those songs. Good for you. Yeah. Those are sad. Those are sad. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. And, and, and what's doubly sad about that whole thing is the people who quote it and refer to it as if it is breaking new ground left and right. And I'm thinking, we're not allowed to talk rap anything. We, 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 we put the doornail on that in 1989. You're not allowed to do that. Man, it, 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 that's the be Didn't Will Ferrell do that with the junior high uh, teacher in the gym where he's <laughs> rapping things? That's not that's not good. At some point, we should talk about uh, we should talk about something like Hamilton or if not Hamilton, but maybe other things that we file in the same category, which are we don't like these. Yes, but yet someone could defend it and go. It's incredibly popular. Yeah, well, yeah. It's incredibly popular. So, so what the heck? Yeah. I mean, of I course. don't like NASCAR. Well, <laughs> Look, I like a file. I like to imagine a file somewhere that has NASCAR in it and Hamilton. Yes. Yeah. And, and M and W W W E wrestling. Wasn't that a funny thing that it was WWF forever. And somehow this juggernaut, what would we call it? Maybe like the fourth most popular sport in America 
it lost its naming rights to the World Wildlife Fund. <laughs> right. <laughs> they had to do a total new rebrand. Yep. Somehow the little Move panda all. beat Vince McMahon, who's a billionaire, yeah, I, I think. I think that's funny. I love it. Okay. This is taking too long. Let's get one of yours. Oh, all right. Uh, here, here, I'll go sad. I saw a guy doing this the other day. I had to, I was meeting, meeting up with a guy for lunch. Had to go into the mall. Now, now you say food and entertainment. I, I, I'll be with you on that. But I'm uh-huh. also, I, I, I also am going to bring in some Larry David social. I'm glad. Ticks. Podcast. Sure. Can't abide it. Yeah. This one, I'm, I, I meet a guy for lunch by the mall. So I'm there early. It's cold outside. I'll go in just right inside the mall and I'll sit there and I'll read for a minute waiting for him. And I see this guy do this. You pick a guy up at the mall? You get him where you can. So okay. I go and no, I'm meeting him at a, a fantastic barbecue place right by the Okay. Mall. And so I'm sitting there reading and this guy has come over. He's got his phone. He leans it up against the little thing yeah. and he got his lunch and he's going to start playing videos or, yeah. or FaceTiming. I don't know what. Without a headset. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Sure, no sure, headset. Sure, sure. Of course. This is of course. so rampant in our world. Yes. And I see it most often at airports. Air, in airplanes. In airplanes. I was going to get to airplanes. It's it, When okay. a little kid's doing it, I'm like, okay, it's not your fault, little kid. It's your parent. Plug Someone it in. Someone could help him. Yes. yes. And I, I always have a little yay moment when the flight attendant gets on. So, and clearly someone's complained. Uh, yes. We're going to need everybody to use their headsets. I'm like, that's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Because we don't want to hear whatever it is. Even if I was interested in it, I don't want to uh-huh. hear it because a, yeah. I can't really hear it. And I thought it reminded, I was thinking about it yesterday, it reminded me of when I lived in Los Angeles and I lived this box apartment in this box, of, uh, you know, tall apartment building. And all I could smell was the f- crappy food that other people were making. That's what this is like. And then I thought even worse, it's almost like someone's eating something I don't want to eat. And they're kind of cramming a little of it in my mouth. I'm not hungry. I'm not eating food right now, yet I'm supposed to sort of process whatever you've got. And it's this, I think the thing that really gets under my skin. Yes, there's the, there's the, I don't, the sensory overload. Like I'm trying to focus on other stuff. You're giving me noise, but it's, and this is such a bugaboo for me constantly in society. (laughs) I can do what I want. And yeah, exactly. oh, I'm so sorry. It's impinging. Yeah. Yeah. It's making me crazy. This I don't is my care world. About your thing. Yes. yes. This is my world. You just happen to be listening to my FaceTime call with my Aunt Judy. Uh, I don't want any of it. I can, I can pile on to this complaint, if I may. On Go my ahead. way here this morning, um, my, my, the road on which I leave my neighborhood and go out into the wider world is a big downhill. So, and and it's, and there's always people parked on the side. So we're forever taking turns to get to see who uses that lane to either go up or down. You might not know this because you might not have this situation in your life. Um, Those who are coming downhill have the right of way. I I didn't know that, but I learned that over the years. There's a guy parked on, he's one of those cars parked. So what happens is two cars meet. One has to get over to the side, kind of fake side, and the other slides by them, and then they go up. That happens all the time. Somebody's coming up, and they, oh, I got to pull into a spot because somebody's coming. Mm. There was a guy sitting on the side of sitting on the side of where all the cars are parked, like someone would do if they were getting out of the way, with his lights on. And so you think, oh, this is a car coming up. So I sat up at the top and waited a while. Oh no, he, he's just idling in the car with his lights on. And I drive by and he's just looking at his phone. And I'm thinking, now see, that guy is thinking, I got my lights on. What, what does that matter to you? Because you live in a wider world, bro. Right. <laughs> because it's my job to be considerate. And I see the lights and go, oh, someone's coming up, et cetera. Seems to me much like the guy who's watching no headphones and he's going to watch a big show for his lunchtime right in the middle of God and everybody. As if Apple doesn't give you the phone that we look, you bought our phone. We're going to toss in these little, these little air, air, air things. So that you can have headphones. Yeah. So we know you don't, it, it, it's, we don't want to live in a world where everyone's isolated, but we also don't want to live in a world where we're all in each other's, like there just yeah. needs to be, 
allow me to invite you into my sonic space. Yeah. Hey, what are you listening to? Oh, well, let me let me pull this out and play it for you. Well, you know, here's a thought. All of us have six extra pairs of headphones in a drawer somewhere. Why don't we put one in a pocket? And hey, then oh, I next... see you don't have one. Yeah, you don't have these. You need these. Here's a high quality pair. I got these as a as a white elephant gift. They're yours. I I love it. I have to say, as a button on this, the most common, the most, uh, the most egregious offenders of this are workers at the airport. They come oh. and take their little break, and they sit in the uh, you know oh. gate B seven, and they're they're watching stuff. Oh, wow. that's true. That's wow. true. And they're kicked back. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And they think and, that you can't see them. They're, to them, they're in a lounge. They're in a private lounge. Yes, they're at home. And I mean, yeah. that's that's it. We all think that th this is our world today. I mean, this this uh -huh. goes back to your yoga pants thing. Like, I, I'm referencing something that nobody's heard, but I've heard plenty of times what about from you. Pajama pants in on the airplanes. I'm sure. We, we're at a we're at a spot now where home is everywhere. You yes, know, I feel I feel so at home in the world that I can just do what I would do at home. I don't care. Uh, I really no. don't care. Come I was on. at I went to a movie uh, f a couple months ago. A uh, lady lays down next to me in the, the she's got her blanket. She's got her snacks. I, I, I just I want to look at her and go. <laughs> she yeah. brought a blanket to the to the movie theater. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, that's new. Uh huh. I, I, okay. I, I, get, I, I wanted to say, oh, sorry, I didn't know I'd gotten into your house. I didn't know you lived here. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you a, a, a one up here. Mm. Okay, it's going to be a quick hit. All right. And I like I like noticing things that are arcane that that uh, you know they're details of life and people don't comment on them very often. I haven't heard people mention this thing maybe ever for years and years and years at least, but I love them. Ready? What a, what a roll up. Yeah. Collar stays. I love collar stays. The little inserts that go inside only the finest garments. A lot, a lot of your cheapo, you're not going to buy a old Navy shirt with room for collar stays. So uh, a nice shirt, and it's got a little window for you put you put your little hard plastic or maybe if you go crazy and you go buy some metal collar stays you can do that too i love the look it looks crisp it looks uh it looks brand new it makes a shirt look brand new it pops off the neck a little window for your tie there i love collar stays I love that you bring that up. I'm with you. There's something about that that feels it's no it, it, to me. I, I categorize it as the same place as French cuffs. We have a shirt, and it's or, or even not French cuffs, but just just got the holes in it. This shirt it requires something extra, and so yes. now you know we've gone from blanket at the movie theater to <laughs> we're going to do up for the public. We're going to do up, yeah. Oh, and and I think my dad had. Like brass collar stay. Oh well, you know. The, oh, he's now, now you know the Louis the monogrammed 16th. collar stays. Yeah, Louis the sixteenth. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll never forget <clears throat> when Janine Hurst. Remember? Do you remember this comment? She was no. criticizing. She was criticizing somebody, one of our peers in high school. Um, and it was somebody. It was. It was as if I'm trying to think of the kind of situation. It was as if someone had a date with a with a kind of an unknown, not from the pack. Right. And and uh, you know, it was kind of like, well, what do you think, Mrs. Hurst? And her comment was, she doesn't really do up, does she? Ooh. Yeah. That's a I southern like zinger right there. That that is. That reminds me of a zinger of my nephew who's in college now. And uh we asked about some girl. How's how's Kelly? Because he, he used to have a thing for Kelly. He goes, Yeah, how's Kelly? She, oh, she had a real shine down. Oh, a shine down. That, what does that, that mean? Was, her looks took a dramatic uh, turn. <laughs> she's down. not good looking anymore. No, no, her shine it, turned down. I'll be darn. Okay. When the collar stays, it's it almost implies that what's going to happen with your collars if you don't have these is what would happen with a dicky in a cartoon. It'll roll up like a like a. a, a <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 
That's right. They do. Do you can't if you get a bad shirt, it can do a roll up on you. Yeah, and that's why you have the button button down. That was the that's that was right. The cure. And let me just say to uh, uh, all eight of the people listening, mm-hmm. it, it, if your collar does any kind of inversion, if it, if it if if there's an angle between the top and the tip of of the, if it does anything. It's time to destroy the shirt at this mm-hmm. point. So just it's get rid of it. It's now a smock. It's now a smock for your children. Yeah. Put it you know, on you backwards can, you and can go do, do paint. You can do what my neighbor Scott Parrish used to do because because he was punk before there was punk. You you cut. You take a pair of scissors and you cut off the collar of the of your polo shirt. You cut off the sleeves of your polo shirt, and you've got a summertime. A summertime uh, shirt for your BMX bike. I re- that re- that reminds me of a really cool guy when I lived in Detroit as a middle schooler. This cat played saxophone in the school band. I played yeah. clarinet. So there was like, there was a class system, a cool the class. The cool system. kids in the sax section. Yeah, he really was cool. He had a cool hair, and I remember he <laughs> would take his shirts and he would his button down shirts, and he would take the collar. And then turn the collar all the way in. Okay, I'm and then listening. Button the top, so it became yep. like its own well band collar. A monk, a monk shirt. Yeah, yeah, he, he would do that. I thought, nah, that's pretty cool. Now there was a time when they called that. I think they called it a band collar. There was a band time collar. when that was a that was a look. You rock oh, that sorry, look band from collar. J- You're right. Yeah, from, that wasn't because we were in the band. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. That's where <laughs> I my guess it could have been a marching band collar. But yeah, you. I remember you would wear these often from the from the. J crew or the J Peterman. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. Whatever J Peterman said, I trusted that. Yeah. Which uh, we, I, we now know their global offices only exist here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Really strange. What's, what's left of the J Peterman company? Not much. Just a, a yeah. guy with a quill writing things, writing, a, yeah. writing catalogs. I, by hand. I went by there the other day and, and uh, I don't know, for old time's sake, pressed my face against the, the uh, door of their little receiving area what they have on the walls, first of all, the the, the um, furniture in the lounge is all like fancy chairs made out of uh, Indian quilts that that just the kind of like funky mishmash yeah. of thing. And what they had on the walls, their wall art was their own artwork from the catalogs, blown Should up. Be. Like, Should here's be. a great here's a great pair of clogs. Yeah. yeah. And there's some guy at a desk and he's just going, still got it. <laughs> yep. All right. Here's my, here's my quick hit thing. I love, All I right. have a baking scale. I have a scale for the kitchen, little digital scale. I've been into yeah. baking in the last, I don't know, year or something. You? And, uh-huh. And I, it's got, I'm just going to leave that alone. I'm just, just, we'll just go on with we, your story. We all, have, we all have hobbies. We all have something okay. that we all I would have call some- that a peccadillo. Uh, I got more than a few of those. <laughs> uh, I, I need something that feels, this is, this is what I decided. I, I was like, why do I like baking so much? And mm. I realized you do, I've started a business, you do your work. It never really feels done. It feels like there's always more. You could be doing more. Yeah. It's, it rarely do client engagements of feel course. completely finished. I of go course. in and I make a cake. I make some cookies. It's done. You made it. There's I made no it. More to do. We can't fix this. The ship has yeah. sailed into your mouth. We're done. <laughs> and so, I, I, Kristen, my wife, got me a baking scale at some point, and I love this thing oh. because when it says it needs a quarter, a, a cup and a quarter of flour, I like translating that to grams and getting oh. the exact right amount. Now, if oh. you want to, if you want to argue with me over this, that it doesn't really matter that much, I'll roll over. I get it. I was thinking about this. That you know, I that Paula Dean could eyeball it. She could, and these yeah. recipes will say you need exactly this much flour. So make sure you scoop it in and then and then level it off. And then later it goes sprinkle a bunch of flour on the on the table and start rolling this thing in it. Well, what happened to our very particular amount of flour? Where and, do you think that flour goes that you sprinkle on the counter? It goes you don't into wipe the it off dough. When you're done. No, yeah, it's right. There. It, it gets, it's going to get baked in. But something about the the scale, I like the precision of it. Yes. And I'm very much, you'll remember this character from SNL, Phil Hartman character, the anal retentive chef. Of course. Remember this guy? 
Sure, sure. Uh, for you youngsters, it was a it was a cooking show, and this guy was obsessed with how he would dispose of things. And well, yeah. we're gonna need to. And he was just very. Good. I'm a little like that. I like to clean the dish. Okay, I've just uh -huh. used the dish. I'm gonna clean the dish. So I like when I put it in the oven. I turn around to the kitchen. Who cleaned this kitchen? This guy. Ready to go. Love it. Uh oh. Oh, the calls are coming in. Uh, <laughs> Omaha, Omaha, are you there? Hello. I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off on line three because we're already, there's a lot of reaction to whether oh. this is a hobby of yours or right. this is a character flaw of yours. Well, I think so this I, could be, this could be a, uh, this could be a recurring bit. Hobby or peccadillo. Hello. <laughs> yes. uh, it's, uh, it's, hey, Gene, I, I'm going to say it's a peccadillo. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Tulsa. Good answer. Next one. Okay. He, he, Larry King would do this if you're watching on the video. He'd go, Tulsa, hello. He, he would do the, fing, the finger gun. <laughs> okay. Odd guy. Odd guy, Larry King. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out my second happy up. This is my second up. All right. And that is, um, there's a wonderful story behind this. I, I, Let's see. I'm not a big coffee guy. And I, I, we were talking about hot drinks. Why is there such a limited, there's a limited palette of what you can do with hot drink. You can do coffee and all of its accoutrement. You could do, you, if you're not man enough for coffee, you could do Then tea. you say accoutrement, I think. If you're not <laughs> you, <man enough>. <laughs> <laughs> you do tea. It's kind of an embarrassing step down at the restaurant, do you have tea? Could you yeah. bring me some tea? It needs a better name. It, it does. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So I I always, now I hold, I have the little Keurig machine. You can make yourself a cup of X. And so what I keep by that is powdered. Um, this, this could be one of my things. I'm sorry for the run up to this. I love to have a little can of, of powdered, uh, beef, uh, not chicken stock, chicken broth. I make that as a hot drink and I love it. I feel like it's more savory. Such How do you feel about that? How do you I feel about it, that? I, you brought this. I just think it's so, I know people who drink beef broth, chicken broth. Yeah. I, it just seems really, it, it, to me, it's like, you know what? Sometimes I just need a little savor. I got a salt lick on my desk. <laughs> That's what it feels like. You, you you don't you don't you don't like soup you don't like the broth i like it when it's soup time <laughs> not, not not two in the afternoon Ooh, i'll just have a, a cup of hot broth as if i'm an invalid as if as if i'm, I'm in a home So you if wanna, you're, I always think you want to put something in that broth. So, so if, <laughs> gosh. So if your instant coffee powder goes into hot water, that mm -hmm. is totally cool. If my powder goes into water, not cool. I get it. The line is confusing. <laughs> but here's the thing: I'm never going to have coffee for dinner later. <laughs> I might have a soup later. <laughs> Okay, forgive me, fans. Forgive me, listeners. That tickled me. Um, okay, so I'm interested in exploring the world of what can a hot drink be. Clearly. And I started rifling through the files in my mind, and I said, you know what? There used I lived in England for a few years. There used to be a drink that I adored. And they, they sell it as a early morning, late night drink, but it's not like anything we have in the U S I knew, I, I, I knew that it was wheat based. So I said, it's like a weedy drink. That's all I, that's all I know. Well, my good friend, Dave Neubauer, he went and he looked it up, found this drink, sent me the stuff. I'm enjoying this drink. Not at this moment but I'm enjoying it presently in my life. I'm happy to announce it to the people. It's called, it, now it's a last name, okay? It's someone's last name. So the name of this drink is very strange. 
The name of the drink is, and I remembered that it was strange, but I couldn't remember the name. Horlicks. Hor, H-O-R, Horlicks. H-O-R-L-I-C-K-S. We'll just leave the name of the drink off to the side. We won't, we won't comment on the name of the drink. It's called Horlicks. Now, what it, what it comes across as is something like cream of wheat in a drink. Mm. And what a wonderful alternative to coffee. It's mm. uh, smooth. You can make it with milk or water, but I'm going to say even with water, it's pretty smooth. Um, if you want to add a little creamer to it, which this guy does from time to time, um, makes it fantastic. It's hot. It's uh, oh, they're, one of their, their uh, little brags is oh it's full of the vitamins you know it's got all your b12 and all that stuff built into it anyways it's wonderful it's horlicks and i'm gonna finish this commentary by by giving a a maxim to you people and that is for me i don't know if most people don't enjoy cream of wheat it's a it is a it is a bygone food that Mm -hmm. 12 year olds don't know anything about today but we were served it as youngsters. And to me, cream of wheat, the wheat, the wheat based breakfast food and oatmeal, those, these things, they're parallels, Mm -hmm. but I handle them completely differently. And here's my maxim. If it's oatmeal, I want it savory. I want it to be a salt based flavor with oatmeal. If it's cream of wheat, I want it sweet. I want a little brown sugar in there. I want a little cinnamon in there. There, I've said it. Wow, a hot take. Now this this drink is it a powder? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So what did you got, think it was? Well, I don't know. A tea type bag that's steeping. Okay. No, know. it's a, it's a powder. It's a powder. Wow. What a, what an yeah. odd odd thing you've brought in. And they market it now. Obviously, uh, having hold, held the package in my hand recently. Um, you can you can see what they do is they market it as a nighttime drink. They say uh-huh. it kind of slows you down and puts you in a sedate kind of a mood. Because you're but carbo loading. I, I, I a hot so. drink. Uh. I guess so. <laughs> to me, it's a it's just an ideal replacement to coffee. Everybody's having coffee. I'm having Horlicks. Deal with it. Thanks to our sponsor today, Horlicks. Horlicks. When you want a bunch of wheat in your mouth. Yep. Have a Horlick. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. I'm going. Uh, I'm going entertainment for my my last two entertainment. So my my okay. up is entertainment. My down is entertainment. I'll let you choose. Right. Which, what, what do you want? What do you want? Let's go down first. Let's leave. Let's, let's leave Jeff on a high note today. All right. That's a good idea. I've been watching these Star Wars TV shows. There's two. If for those who don't know, there's two two Star Wars TV shows. There's one called so The Mandalorian. This tells me you have the you have the Disney. The Disney we, show. We got machine. the Disney thing, which All right. sure. There's a there's a Mandalorian show about a guy who looks like Boba Fett, and he goes around and he's protecting this little green guy who looks like Yoda. And there's a nut, there's a second show. So you'd think, you know, obviously Disney's going to go. We got the guy. We got the guy with the helmet, the stoic guy who's really kind of uh, tough, but he's getting a, a softer edge to him. They've scratched that itch. So now they're going to do a second show. The second show is Jokey, Book of, Jokey Boba Fett. It's going to be the Book of Boba Fett, which is a guy in a helmet who's pretty hardened, but is slowly softening up. So my big, my big, my, my big beef. Uh huh. Well, Dave, here's Go my on. big beef. Okay. My big beef is this: What happened to fun Star Wars? Star Wars. So these these series are the future of Star Wars world. Now you sure, and I, of we both That's like where Star we're Wars. Going. This is these shows are such a hit, and I would say it's it's it, we're getting a false positive with these shows being such a hit because yes, there's a certain amount of they're they're pretty well made. They're well made. There there's some good storytelling, but it's all we got, and so people just take it in. But the fact is, these shows are not fun. There's nothing fun about these shows. There's no True. light moments. There's nothing funny. There's yeah. no Han Solo who's like, what's this world? Who cares? I'm going to I'm gonna have some personality. Everybody yeah. is very serious. Everything is very serious. serious. Yes. And even on the Boba Fett show, Boba Fett 
has a, has a right hand man woman who I cannot abide. Oh. I cannot abide her. That's a, that's a Stephen phrase. Can't abide. I can't abide her. Yeah. She and my, my a screenwriting guru guy I follow says the big problem is these two people are just alike. They they respond to situations with the, the same, same response. So why do we need both of them? Right, right. And but and again, you go back to the Mandalorian guy. You go to Boba Fett. You go to his little his little shrewy sidekick, and everybody is just really hand wringing. And what are we gonna do? I guess we're gonna have to do something violent. It's exhausting. They can't hit a different note. It's like they've got they they've chosen like five notes on the piano right next to each other, and that's all they're playing. What happened to fun Star Wars? And and everybody will go, well, you know, you hear this often. You'd hear this often about the bad choices George Lucas made. Well, they're for children. You know, Star Wars is really made for children. These shows are not made for children, by the way. Oh, they're not. Right, right, right. Not only from the violent standpoint and what, what they're implying in certain moments, but this isn't, there's nothing fun about this. You want to smile. Yeah. You want to go, oh, that was, that was, ah, that. It just feels more like, yeah, a, like more like a, I don't know. It feels like a, yeah. a, a spaghetti Western, which wasn't yeah. fun, but had its own yeah. elements. I love, world. love sci-fi. Love the genre of novels called sci-fi because you get to do brain, brain exercises. Yes. Th that's right. Uh, yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is I wouldn't throw, I wouldn't say, so as adults, we need realistic fiction. That's the only thing that's going to save us. Fair. But I, I'm with you. There becomes a point where this obsession over this Star Wars, really what it is, if I was being generous, and I'm, I'm going to try to be generous and empathetic. Okay, try. I think these people are, they're, they're looking back on their childhood and going, I just want more of that. I, yeah. I want to I experience that. I get it. I get it. It's not healthy all around, but there's I a I want reason. to understand the Klingon language. Yeah, I know what he said. Okay. Yeah, I know what Horlick said. He said this. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wish I could share more of my happies next time. Okay. I've got one sad left. Here it is. I'm going to make it a quickie. This is just a guy. I'm just a man. I don't have my own opinions, so I'm just sharing. These do not represent the opinions of the management. Right, right, right. The network that's carrying this. Okay. <laughs> It's a, it's a simple thing. It's heavy footedness. When you hear, when you hear, can hear someone, it might be a hotel. It might be someone who's staying with you in the home. The thud, thud, thud of heavy footedness. I find off putting and I find that I, I think less of the person when I go, Oh, you're a heavy walker. I can hear you coming down the stairs from across the house because I don't we aspire to be in kind of a a a a, a, a dancer in our hearts, the yeah, Fred Astaire, right. mm -hmm. light on the feet, light on feet. agile. Yeah. Isn't light in that, the loafers? Isn't that no, not light in the loafers. Being a little, being agile, being being. Uh, I don't. I don't want to be. You know, lead foot. Lead foot is an insult. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're slow. You're plodding. And when I hear a doom, dong, dong upstairs, I'm like, what? I, heavy footedness is on my sad list of things I don't like. And as a man who's what, 6'3"? You're 6'3", is that right? Somewhere around there. And, and many pounds. Hmm. That, that, it's not like you're not fighting against gravity yourself. Sure. You got to do work. You know what? We're back to the guy coming up the hill with his lights on. Sure. I... If you're if it's six in the morning, you will not hear these sock not not shooed socked feet of mine coming down the stairs. You won't hear them because I'm gonna do I'm, the extra three percent of effort to make sure that it's not loud for those I've, who are sleeping. I've noticed that from you. There are times when you've stayed in our house and we'll look up at the stairs and there's Stephen halfway down. Oh, we didn't hear him. You didn't hear me. And sometimes you'll wake up in the morning and go, hey, where's the TV? Mm. And it's because I can be really quiet. I can where's make my a buck wallet on the corner. Yep, that's right. But, uh, we were in a hotel uh, last month with, I've got two small daughters, nine-year-old, seven-year-old. Oh, is this brag time? Oh, we can afford hotels. Oh, I see. 
I didn't say we paid for it. We were able to jimmy with a credit card <laughs> into a room, into a hotel. Smart, smart. And the girls are <laughs> girls. I know I was driving my wife nuts. She's like, Give me a break, girls. I've been in hotels on business uh-huh. trips. Uh-huh. I know what this sounds like. Yeah, they can it's hear you going below. To drive them nuts. And yes. I'm looking at them, not, combined, they weigh about 105 pounds. Uh-huh. And yet, it might as well be Andre the Giant. Yes. And as we my had that in a hotel recently. As my mom says, why did these girls run everywhere? We yeah. would all be so thin. They run, they run everywhere. Everywhere yes. they go, they're running. They're always running <laughs> everywhere. And running. Running. Yeah, yeah, that's them. That's them. Beautiful. I I like that. All right. My last one, my last positive is uh, entertainment based. And it's it's really in praise of a guy. Okay. And this this fella, boy, he seems like a messed up kind of troubled guy. He's got a lot of troubles in his life. And yet he's devoted himself to obsessing over something. Russell Crowe. Yeah, he's obsessed over hostess (laughs) twinkies. That guy. Uh, Okay. Uh, All right. uh, And I think we could all say that it takes certain people who have levels of of, levels of obsession that are probably unhealthy, but yet the output of that level of obsession might be beneficial to us because they're 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 doing all the unhealth and like I I don't want to look at their life and go I affirm that, but I'll sure take the output. And this is this is the Don's. The Dons. The Dons is a guy named Don Giller. Oh, who, the Dons. You sure, yeah. sure, sure. D-O-N-Z. D-O-N-Z. For some reason, years ago, he started to uh, VHS tape record every episode of not The Late Show with David Letterman, but the NBC Late Night with David Letterman. All however many thousands of episodes. And he has All now- he is is a more dedicated version of you and me who that, would videotape them uh, on occasion- Right. And, in, and in we don't have high access to school. him anymore. We, you right. and I don't, we can't, we don't trot out the VCR and go, let's watch January 27th, 1988. Oh man. When Pee Wee Herman was on. Yeah. Sure. But we used to. And now this guy, the Dons, he, oh, man, he's a funny guy, but he not only will take these and digitize them and upload them to YouTube, he will cherry pick and he'll go, okay, here's all the appearances of Jack Hanna. Here's right. all the appearances. Here's, he just put up like, all of the uh, all of the viewer mail bits from the old show. That's and crazy. I mean, a Terry me, Gar supercut. Oh yes, there are, there are lots of supercuts. That's that's the right thing, and yeah. I love it because if you're doing your work day and you're like, I need a little reward. I don't need. I'm not going to sit down and go watch a show. I'm not going to watch them, but I just need like a three minute reward. The Don's. The Don's has yeah. got me. I'm I'm going to watch this one failed bit that he's chosen to put up. Now, yeah. when I traveled a lot for work, what I would do is I've got a little YouTube downloader and I would download some of these, put them on an iPad. And while everybody else is watching the latest Russell Crowe movie, Losers. I'm, I'm sitting there watching a 30 year old late night with but, David Letterman and people would and walk laughing. by and going, what? what? Where'd it, you get that? A, yeah. Like, how do you have an antenna that actually goes back in time and picks Into up the past, old yeah. television and, oh man, l- losing it. And, and maybe the piece de resistance for me is the yearly, uh, the yearly viewing I do of Christmas with the Letterman's. If you're interested uh, at all, yeah. pull up Christmas with the Letterman's. Also, Melman bus lines. The Melman bus line supercut <laughs> is just cannot be beat. Okay. Now, I also enjoy the Dons from time to time, but you've just brought an idea into my mind, which I'm sure the Dons has entertained this idea. We know that David Letterman is is game for what the Dons has done because he's like, hey, you did it, guy, so knock yourself out. Um, what if the Dons, he had some kind of subscription service so that every time he releases, an, now he, all, every episode is already out there, but he does the work of doing these super cuts and, and I'm going to think everything that had a ping pong table in it, I'm going to make that its own cut. I would be interested in that subscription service for just the reason that you said, which is 
I'd, I'd love the new, the new collection. Cause I'm not going to go sorting through all the stuff and have to watch all of the hours and hours to get to the bits that delight me. But gosh, if, when he produces a, here's a Bill Murray supercut, mm. I'm all in. I don't think he's allowed to, um, make to money. Make money. Direct, yeah. Ooh. I don't think he, cause there's not even ads on those on YouTube, Ooh, uh, what a but bummer. he does, he has some sort of, uh, uh Patreon, one of those things where people can give him money. Oh, you can donate. You can donate uh, to him, which is, and by the way, I just realized I, today may be the 40th anniversary of Late Night with David Letterman. And so I think Dave's showing up on one of the late night shows, either tonight or tomorrow, uh, 40 years. That's of, right. I saw now, that he was on uh, Seth last night. Oh, last night. And, yeah. and this is, this. you could file all this under obsessive uh, things we enjoy, but my word there has never been anything like that show. There will probably never be anything like that show. And I know mm -hmm. for guys like you and I, it scratches a very specific comedy uh, itch that. The Meryl Marco itch. The Meryl, Mar which by the way, I was in the library the other day and I saw she has a comic book of her growing up and all this. And I bet we could find other people like this. And you, you look through it and go, this is all sad and not quite funny, mm. which I think she's kind of sad and maybe, but you put her brain power in this yeah. world. And I mean, specific place. Yeah. It, 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 it took the best parts of her thinking and gave it an outlet that was just wonderful alongside these other people who were writers on the show and did things that, yeah, anyway, we're talking yeah. about. It's, we're talking about food you can't taste right now, basically. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. Okay, well, that is, a, that is a wonderfully depressing ending for the day. See you next time on Two, two, two Up, up two, down. two Down. Two Down.